Inside this big box is one of the best Bitcoin miners in the world right now. Let's open it up, take it apart, and find out what makes it so great. Today's weapons of choice is my Milwaukee 18 volt drill and this fancy knife. Huge shout out to the team over at millionminer.com for helping me get my hands on the Bitmain Antminer S21 Pro. When I was talking with a variety of different companies out there about getting my hands on one of these units super early, huge shout out to millionminer.com for working with me to get this here so quickly. We're right now in the beginning of July, just got back from mining Disrupt, and man, the S21 Pro waiting for me at my doorstep. Guys, this thing comes in at 234 terahash, which is absolutely insane. Remember when the S21 came out at 200 terahash and we were all hyped and thinking, man, 200 terahash, that's absolutely nuts. And already in just a few months, we've blown past 200 terahash and now we're on to 234 terahash. Well, as much as I love this unit, I want to know what makes this so good, so powerful, and one of the best out there right now in the market of July of 2024. So let's strip this down, all the way down to pieces, and let's see what makes it tick. So while I'm hard at work taking apart this brand new Bitmain Antminer S21 Pro, I wanted to go ahead and give a huge shout out to the team over at Million Miner for making today's video possible. If you guys are interested in your next ASIC purchase and you're looking around, shopping around, go over and check out millionminer.com. They have a boatload of some of the latest and greatest miners out there that you guys can see over on their website here. In addition to that, as a home miner, we're always looking for hosting opportunities. Well, they offer it at Million Miner, and they actually have a variety of different ways to get into hosting with them. If you take a look, they offer all their pricing listed right on their website, completely transparent. In addition to that, they have multiple facilities all over the world, some in Russia, some in Dubai, right here in Texas, as well as Paraguay. Finally, if you just wanna get mining today and you don't wanna wait, they actually have miners standing by that you can purchase and they will flip super fast and get you up and mining very quickly at eight cents total, which is absolutely insane. All right, huge shout out once again to Million Miner. Go over and check them out and back to your entertainment. All right, so the best Bitcoin miner in the world in July 2024, at least as of right now, is now in pieces. Dang, that came apart so much faster than I expected. So chassis, pretty much larger, you know, than the actual 21, let alone, you know, even the S19K Pros 
or any of those other models, you know, much larger of a chassis overall. The width, the height, everything about it is much larger. If you guys are curious on the measurements of this, if you guys have a mining farm or you're trying to figure out the slotting, I'll measure it at the end and I'll put it directly in the description if you guys are interested and need it. So one of the biggest changes are these fans. These are much, much larger. These are 140 millimeter fans versus what we're used to, which is the 120. My understanding is that allows them to spin a lot slower, but provide the same level of CFM and cooling. Now, these are a little bit different. I'm gonna try to put my hand underneath these to show it off. I don't know if you notice in the video, they have this clip on top of the four uh, pin here, you know, the connector. So these were new. We did see that some of the S19K Pros they had, it was weird. It was hybrid. It had like half of these and half of the traditional four pins. Well, the S21 Pro has all four of them. So keep that in mind if you guys are swapping these out to a shroud system, an inline fan system, I will be doing that with this in a future video. Nothing special about our front piece here and our cover. The power supply, of course, is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to because of the P13 to P14 on here. Uh, let's kind of flip this around here uh, and we can see some of the more details. APW 17, 12, and 15. And it's got to be, you know, a decent size, especially for the amount of power that the S21 Pro is putting out. So taking another look, let's look here at this low pro profile front piece you know this was kind of came off a little weird definitely a little different than what we're used to with that front piece there has our micro usb ethernet our fault lights and then this little spot right here little channel piece right here as well so this was definitely different didn't anticipate that on that side especially as well with our lid this kind of low profile lid that we do have here does have an am logic board we'll take a look at that in just a second here so here she is. Sorry, it's a little bit of a mess. My drill had some drywall pieces in it. And as we started to get into it, it kind of made a little bit of a mess. But this is the S21 Pro um, control board. And we can see on the bottom, here is those four fan connectors that we discussed. Uh, it had the same type of connector on here. Yet you see on the top of our, this is our power cable. Uh, going from the power supply directly to the control board. This one has that same clip on the top. Our ribbon cables and our communication cable all seem the same, didn't seem anything too different. Uh, the bus bars are definitely not the same length as each other. You know, you definitely have one in front of the other with the layout there when we took that apart. But yeah, back to our control board here. So as we had talked about, you know, communication port, we have our power, our four, fan ports there and then we do have the three ribbon cables there on this side some of the boards that we're used to with some of the s19 models actually had a fourth port on it available um, but this one does not at all so if you guys are curious here let's read off some of the numbers one zero 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 five seven nine i see listed uh, in addition to that, we do see right here under that model information control. So CTRL underscore CBE underscore V1 underscore 0000. Uh, and at the top there, minor control board A113DAAP4ENIG underscore V1.1. So I'm not surprised to see some of these low version models with this on the rear side of it. Nothing too crazy here. Our fan grills are black, which is nice, and they match the 140. Now taking a closer look at our hashboard here, man oh man. So taking a look, our bus bars connect at the top here and come all the way down to the very bottom, as well as one does a small kind of piece right in there as well. Uh, taking things that stand out the most to me, we have kind of this yellow coloring and coat on the front of it. I wonder if this is the same that you get with the S19 XPs. You know, there's kind of a layer or coating on these, and I think that makes these harder to work on. Some of you guys that are more knowledgeable in chat, let me know. But I feel like when I had to send my S19 XP control or um, hashboard 
out for repair, it actually ended up having to go over to Bitmain because it couldn't be worked on in the US. Something with the coding, I believe it is, but you guys are gonna know much more. Let me flip this over here. I wanted to read the very bottom of it. Let's move it over. Look at this here. Woo. So the model of the hashboard, if you guys are interested, I'll read it off here is A3HB70601 version 1.0. And we do have a serial number there. It says L6 here, has Bitmain on that logo as well. Some capacitors through here on this side. Now, I don't see any thermal paste coming out the bottom here or on the sides. I am curious if they decided to use thermal pads with these. I'm not brave enough quite yet to take off the entire heat sink. Maybe some of you guys in chat will know if these if they use thermal paste or if they went the route of like Alpha Pex and went with a thermal pad. Flipping this over, come on. That sounded terrible. <laughs> we do have whatever this yellow, it's hard and dry. I think it's some of that coating that we did see on the other side. And uh, other than that, nothing too crazy. Now, no paste coming out the sides at all. Now, I have not run this, but you never know with Bitmain if they did a little uh, QA testing, uh, some little pre-mining going on. But man, oh man, this thing is awesome and super, super slick. Guys, curious, what did you spot different about this that I missed? Leave comments directly down below. Would love to read them and find out more. You guys probably answered a lot of the things that I was thinking about. So now the big one <laughs> to the team over <laughs> at Million Miner. Can I put this back together and will it work? Let's find out in three, two, and one. All right, so I'm not gonna lie. It took me about 15 minutes to strip this down to parts. It took me about a good 40 minutes to actually build it back up. I think it's just finding the way in order all the cables go through and all the routes and everything like that. You know, a little bit different. Something else I figured out was like, you can't actually take off the power supply without taking off the fans and that back plate, which is totally different than a lot of the other previous models that we've had. So we got it back together the S21 Pro from the team over at Million Miner. But now the big question, will it actually mine after I've taken it and stripped it all the way down? So let's get it plugged in and find out, do I actually know what I'm doing or did I make a mistake? All right, moment of truth. This is in my storage closet here. This is not in any way going to be its full-time home just for testing here. I think I need to get a better test bench set up and my home set up maybe out there on our little workbench. But we do have our P13 down here to our C19. We're gonna plug it into the C20. Let's do it. Wrong way. All right, we're plugged in. Let's give this a few minutes and uh, let's see if we get mining. All right, well, it has been two minutes and about 35 seconds. And well, <laughs> we put it back together right because we are off and mining. You can hear the thing screaming in the background. 235 terahash is the average in two minutes. And we're at about right around mid 3600 when it comes down to our watts, which is absolutely insane. All right, so before we go, please go over and check out millionminer.com for working with me to get my hands on the Bitmain Antminer S21 Pro. Truly do appreciate it. If you guys are in the market for your next ASIC miner, go over and check them out. I'll put links directly down below in the video description. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. What's up, guys? Sorry to interrupt your video, but want to keep you in the know. So are you new at mining or you're just looking to get step into it? You're not sure what hardware you want to buy. You're not sure what build you want to do. Need some help? Maybe you're building your first mining rig and you literally need help step by step installing HiveOS. Maybe you're so far away from mining, but you're looking at it and you just need somebody to bounce some ideas off of. Well, I offer one-on-one -on -one calls with the community and I've done boatloads, some really cool ones. I've helped people set up ASIC miners in the Dominican Republic. I've helped someone troubleshoot their very first GPU mining rig. I've chatted with a guy looking to open up a farm and just wanted a sounding board. 
I've helped someone else build and set up and configure their brand new Casper miners. Well, I'm here to help and I'd love to work with you. If you guys need one-on-one -on -one help, I offer it and I love doing it. So there's a link directly down below to thehobbyistminer.io. Go over there and schedule some time with me. All right, back to the video.